today's a sea day and so I thought what better time to take you to a few places around the ship, show you some behind the scenes, and just give you an idea of what it's like to work on cruise ships. If you're new to the channel, my name is Krista. I have worked on ships since 2017 as a performer, on and off obviously in 2020, but I've worked for Norwegian Cruise Line, Regent, and Oceana, and I'm currently on the Enchantment of the Seas with Royal Caribbean. I made a video like this probably like a year, a year ago, um, and I just wanted to kind of do an updated version and see what was different between those cruise lines and this one, what was similar, and just kind of compare them all. But I want to start the crew bar mostly because I haven't had a coffee yet and they close in 30 minutes. So let's go to the crew bar. Say hi guys. <laughs> hi. hi everyone, good morning. So I'm here in the enchantment of the seas. Yeah. So we are in the middle of the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. That's so cool. <laughs> We're getting coffee. We're getting, getting coffee, coffee in the crew bar. Okay, so this is the crew bar. It's open in the morning from 7 to 11 for coffee and fresh juices. And then it's also open in the evening, obviously, for alcohol sales. Depending on the ship that you're on, it'll depend on whether they have liquor or if they only have beer and wine. Drink prices usually range from like $2.50 to like $6. But one thing that's pretty standard among ships is that you can't be over 0.04 blood alcohol content level while on duty or 0.05 while off duty, yeah. So basically, you can't get super drunk because if there's an emergency at any moment, you have to be able to do your emergency duties. If you're supposed to, you know, make the lifeboat go out in an emergency, you can't be drunk because you won't be able to do it. On some ships, they also do random alcohol and drug testing, so you gotta be ready for that. Usually they do it at like 8 a.m. the next day, so you have to be really drunk the night before to fail that, which I've actually seen some people get fired. So if you're gonna work on ships, just know that you can't do any drugs, even if the drug is legal in the place that you are in. If they randomly test you and you have something in your system, you will get fired right away. Or if you're over those alcohol limits, you can get fired. It's kind of serious, so don't get drunk. Too drunk. Okay, so now that we have our coffee, let's go to the mess for lunch. There are two messes on most ships, staff mess and crew mess. Mm -hmm. And the crew mess is usually catered to people from like India, Indonesia, the Philippines, which is most of the crew. And there's a lot of things like curries, stews, dal, rice. And then in the staff mess, it's kind of more Americanized, not really. But there's just different options. There's always pasta, potatoes, there's usually rice over there as well, burgers, chicken, and a lot of the times in the staff mess you can request things like chicken breasts, omelets. It kind of just depends on the ship and if you're a vegetarian they will try to accommodate that as best that they can. Um, you can sometimes get like veggie burgers and stuff and then occasionally they'll do like fun themed nights. So actually tonight is waffles and ice cream which I will definitely be going to. They'll have like burger night, uh, what else have they had? Like donuts, chicken wings, stuff like that. So it kind of keeps things interesting and they do just like special things for the crew just to mix it up because the food kind of does get boring after a while. It's kind of on a rotation. So you're kind of eating the same things pretty frequently. So yeah, it's kind of fun that they do that for us. They also have like ju a juice machine. You can get juice, water, and coffee. Um, not a ton of drink options, but there is that. And then when you're done eating, you take your dish to like the dish pit area and you separate your food between pulpable and non-pulpable. Pulpable is pretty much everything and non-pulpable is like bones, shells, fruit rinds, I guess, that you can't like put through the machine. So you just have to separate your food and then put your dish in the dish pit. That's how we clean up. Everybody do your part. Amazing. <laughs> and then being a part of the production cast, we're actually allowed to go eat upstairs in the guest buffet and the guest restaurants. And I'll explain that a little bit more later um, because right now it's 11.50 and I have to go work the Wi-Fi desk at 12. I'll explain Wi-Fi when I get back. Okay, so I just finished 
a Wi-Fi shift. And what that is, is just helping the guests log on to the internet, buy internet packages, anything to do with internet, just helping them out. This is kind of like a side job that I have, um, but instead of getting paid in money, I get paid in Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi here with Royal is really good. They use Starlink, and so we can stream, watch YouTube, watch TikToks, um, pretty much do anything on the Wi-Fi. Crew members actually here on Royal do get two hours of free internet a week. And then we can also use WhatsApp messaging for free. But if you need more than two hours a week on Wi-Fi, which I think a lot of people do, um, you do have to pay for it and you can buy different packages. So you can buy a 60 minute plan for $4 that expires after 24 hours, 300 minute for $30, it goes up to 1800 minutes. Um, and that's $90 and that's good for 60 days. So that's kind of what the Wi-Fi situation is. Kind of going off of this, Wi-Fi is honestly really important for crew members because it's the only way that they can talk to their family back home. Obviously, you can get off the ship and get Wi-Fi for free or kind of free. Some of the terminals have Wi-Fi, but a lot of times they'll have to go to like a cafe and pay for a coffee to get their Wi-Fi. It can be really lonely when you don't have, you know, your family and friends to talk to at all times of the day, whether it's because of time changes or having to buy Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi maybe not working very well. So that's something to think about if you're considering working on a cruise ship. Just know that I don't think anything can really mentally prepare you for what it's really like to live, work, eat, sleep, do everything on a cruise ship with the same people every single day. Um, there's really no escape. You come back to your cabin, you're still with people probably, you have roommates. It's really important to make friends that you can lean on um, in the times where you maybe can't get in contact with family back home. And especially when you're maybe missing birthdays, holidays, weddings, um, really important things that are going back home. Working on cruise ships is definitely a sacrifice. Obviously, there are a lot of pros, but there are definitely a lot of cons too. It's just a different type of life than it is on land, and it's something that you can't Oh, my light just died. <laughs> it's something that you can't really prepare yourself for until you're actually here doing it. So a really common question that I get is how many hours we work, if we're able to get off the ship, and kind of what we do in our free time. And so I'm going to show you guys today. We are in France. And so um, actually the cruise director just called open tender. So we're able to get off the ship today or now. Um, normally, if we're not tendering, we can just get off right away. But um, when it's tender, we have to wait for a lot of the guests to get off before we can. So yeah, they just called open tender. So let's get off the ship. Okay, so we just got to this little cafe called Copenhagen Coffee Bar, I think. Lab. Lab. <laughs> I'm just having a little breakfast. Sorry, I kind of ate it. I was starving. <laughs> and we just got a coffee. Um, but being part of the production cast, for the most part, we have a couple of hours every day to get off the ship. Um, like today is a show day, so we had a tech run in the morning. Now we're off the ship, and then we'll go back for the show tonight. Other crew members like the casino or the shops, they're not able to be open when we're in port. They're only open when we're at sea, so they're able to get off the ship pretty much every port day unless they have other things going on. And then departments like housekeeping, food and beverage, they're always open, they're always busy. So whenever they get a couple of hours, they're able to get off if they have the time, um, but they definitely aren't able to get off as much as some of the other departments. I don't know the specific, sorry, this trash uh, um, truck is so freaking loud. One second. But what I was going to say is I don't know exactly how many hours everyone works, but there is a maritime law that you have to have at least 10 hours off in a 24 hour period. And one of those um, break periods has to be at least six consecutive hours. So that's just like one maritime law when it comes to hours, because people do work a lot. Um, sometimes people will work the full 14 hours but you can't work 14 hours every single day. You have to have at least 77, uh, 77 rest hours in a seven day period. I'm gonna finish my breakfast and then I'll talk about kind of like different privileges, what we pay for on board and a couple other things, but I'm gonna finish eating. Another thing a lot of ships do is crew tours. So it's basically just excursions for the crew at a very discounted price. Um, they just recently did one to, uh, where was it, Pisa? Pisa, yeah. To Pisa. Um, and then, like, I've done some in the past. We did a boat tour. 
that we got lunch they took us to an island we went snorkeling we also did like a sailboat race against other crew members opportunity for other crew members who don't always have a time sometimes their managers will sign them off from duty for that day so they can go on the tour and and actually get to see uh, a place that we go a port of call crew tours help just you know enrich the crew life okay so obviously when we're off the ship we pay for anything that we want to do so if we go get lunch or go on an excursion we pay for that um, but when we're on board basically you could get away with not spending any money if you didn't want to because our room is covered and all of our food is covered the only extra expenses that you would have to pay for are if you go to crew bar and get a drink or a coffee if you have guest area access and you can go up to the guest restaurants and bars you can pay for drinks up there. Uh, we do get a 20% discount, but not all crew members are allowed to go into the guest areas. So that kind of just depends on what your privileges are. And then we do get two hours free of Wi-Fi, but if you wanted to pay for more, then obviously you would pay for more. Oh yeah, and we also have a slop chest, which is basically like a convenience store for the crew. They have snacks, toiletries, detergent, like other just random things that you would need throughout your contract. And I would say they're a discounted price, but it's actually kind of expensive in there, at least on our ship. I don't know if it's like that on all ships, but it is convenient just to have a place. If you don't want to get off the ship, you can just run in there and grab whatever you need. And then we actually don't pay for medical on this ship. Our medical is included. So if there's an emergency on board, we can go straight to the doctor and get any kind of service we need. Um, if there was something to happen where we had to get off the ship and go get medical care, that would also be covered. Basically anything elective wouldn't be covered. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how expenses work on board. It's up to you how much money you wanna spend. We're about to head back onto the tender and get back on board. Uh, when I get back on board, I'm gonna explain how roommates work um, on this ship and kind of the differences between our ship and other ships. Let's get back on the ship. <laughs> Okay, we just got back home and I want to talk about roommates. I'll talk about performers first. On most ships, um, dancers share rooms and then singers oftentimes get their own rooms. On this ship specifically, only two of the singers get their own rooms and then the other two singers share. For the most part, everyone in the cast is with someone in the cast or with someone in the entertainment department. So one of our castmates is with someone who is from youth staff. And for the most part, when it comes to other departments, they do try to keep you with someone in the same department. They just try to make sure that you're kind of on a similar schedule so that people aren't coming in and out. And it just, it just makes everyone's life easier. Depending on the ship, the cabins could have between two to four people in a room. If you're a performer, you're always at a double occupancy never in more than two people to a room. Also, if you are a vocal captain or a dance captain, a lot of the times you'll also get your own room, but that also depends on the ship. Everything depends on the ship, but this is kind of a standard. Most Royal Caribbean ships do have couples cabins, and really the only difference between a regular bunk bed room and a couple's cabin is that room has a double bed. So you do have to be a registered couple to live with your significant other. Um, if you don't have a marriage license, a house together, or like an apartment, a lease, or some other sort of documentation proving that you are in a relationship, you can't live together. That is a Royal Caribbean thing. Um, on my previous ships with Norwegian and Regent and Oceana, that wasn't the case. Robert and I were able to live together without any extra paperwork. The last thing I'll say about cabins is once a week we have cabin inspection. And what that is, is some higher ups, I think someone from HR security and one person from your department normally will come into your room and make sure that you're not living in like a pigsty. You're not allowed to have anything that is perishable. So if you have like fruit hanging around or they'll look in your fridge a lot of the time and make sure you don't have like milk or yeah, anything perishable. You know, you can't have like a hot plate. You can't have um, an iron, a steamer, coffee machine. There's a lot of things that you're not supposed to have. I've seen people have some of these things, um, but that's kind of the things you're not supposed to have. Anything that could cause a fire. You have to take your trash out, has to be emptied, and then they'll give you like a pass or a fail sort of a situation. And if you fail a certain number of times, I think you can get fired. Um, I don't really know. I've never failed. <laughs> but yeah, cabin inspection once a week. It usually happens after drill. So when anybody signs on to a cruise ship, you will have a safety duty. Uh, on your first day, you'll get your safety card. It'll have a safety number on it. And then you'll have a bunch of trainings showing you what that safety duty means, what you'll have to do in the event of an emergency, what you'll do at all of the drills that happen once a week. So we have initial trainings for like general safety. Um, you have to know things like how many lifeboats do we have? How many people can fit into them? How to use a fire extinguisher? How to use a fire hose? What kind of fire extinguishers do we have? You have to flip a life raft 
in the pool. Um, we have to do all of these initial trainings and then we take, uh, I think it was a 50 question test. And you have to pass that test. If you don't, you'll have to redo all of the trainings and redo the test until you pass. And then we have trainings for our specific safety duty. We have drills once a week uh, just to go over, you know, a simulated emergency and kind of go through the stages of what it would be like in the event of an actual emergency. But safety is something that if you're going to work on a cruise ship, be prepared that that's also kind of like your second job. Okay, it is 5.08. I have rehearsal at 5.15. I have to go to the theater and then I'll be back. Okay, sorry for cutting this video so awkwardly, but I had to go to rehearsal last night and then just wasn't able to finish filming. I feel like I could touch on so many other subjects when it comes to cruise life, so I plan on making a couple more videos like this, just kind of showing you guys the ins and out, ins and outs. But um, if you have any specific questions, drop them below. I want to do a Q&A video here soon. So any questions that you have, I'd be happy to answer them. Or if any other types of videos you want to see, just let me know. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.